It's night 13 of Australian Open 2021 women's final night. We're here to dissect the women's championship decider. Joining me, Nick McCarville and Nat Edwards. Welcome, guys. Naomi Osaka has defeated Jennifer Brady in straight sets and pretty much to script, would you say, Nick? Yeah, as far as the tennis goes, I think yeah. pretty much to script. You know, I think there were a lot of nerves for both of the players for different reasons stepping out. Osaka undefeated in Grand Slam finals. Jen Brady playing in a Grand Slam final for the first time. I thought after that slow start for Brady, she actually settled in pretty well. But you could just feel the Osaka tennis really start to take control after she was able to win that first set. And then Jen pushed her a little bit in the second. I think the crowd really got behind her. I loved, obviously, as an American, seeing that for Jen Brady. But Naomi Osaka, she's been the best tennis player these two weeks, and she proved it tonight. I mean, that was her 21st match win in a row. It's been over a year since Amazing. she's lost a match. The confidence that you would get from that really just propelled her. But she was impressive. I mean, both girls struggled really on serve, didn't they? I think Brady at one point in that first set was about 36% of first serves in, and she was mm. getting super frustrated with that. So it wasn't the best level of tennis in that first set, but certainly, as you say, they settled into it. But Naomi, geez, she's a classy player, isn't yeah. she? And she did mention afterwards that she was so nervous, even more so in this Grand Slam, because she just wanted it so badly. Yeah, totally. I mean, I mean, she has proven that right now she is the best tennis player in the world. She's won the last two slams she's played, and she's now a four-time slam champ. How does this change Naomi's status as potentially the new figurehead in women's tennis? Yeah, I think she's sort of been growing into that the last couple of years. You know, we knew that she had her big breakout win at the U.S. Open a few years ago and then splashed on here to win in 2019, slowly growing into that role. I think she's going to be the face of the Tokyo Olympics when they come around this summer. I think that's something that she's really looking forward to. She has been very particular about the team she's built around her, saying that she wants to be a vessel for their hard work as a team. I think she's proving that. Not, not just match by match, but point by point. And that's how you build really legends out on a, a sporting court or field. And on her team, she dedicated her Grand Slam win tonight to them specifically. They yeah. are so important to her. As you say, I think the next challenge now is getting more comfortable on surfaces at Roland Garros and obviously the grass yes. at Wimbledon because they're the two slams that she hasn't been able to, to win yet. But let's, she's 23. Four from four. She's got but, time. Oh, she's got plenty of time. That's not a bad effort, is it? No. But honestly, she's, she's doing so so well and she did say that her biggest goal this year is the Olympics so we'll have to wait and see where she goes this year I'm looking forward to it <laughs> so a second title here in Melbourne for Naomi Osaka her fourth major title overall well tonight Nick and Nat we have a man who is going for number nine here in Melbourne can you believe Novak Djokovic to take on the pride of Russia in Daniil Medvedev. Nick, at the start of, in fact, two weeks before this tournament, <laughs> we had you on the AO Show podcast and yeah. you picked this matchup. The guru. 35 <laughs> days out. Um, I mean, what, what led you to make that call way back then? Well, let's say I lucked out. Let's be honest. I, that wasn't that necessarily... Was yeah, it was a total, he knows it was a total <laughs> fluke. I've made many wrong picks before, but... Coming in, you know, we talk about the 21 matches mm. in a row for Osaka. It's 20 in a row for Daniil Medvedev, and that includes a win over Novak Djokovic to close 2020. I think Medvedev has really come into his own as someone that expects himself not only to go deep at ATP events, which we've seen the last couple years, but now to really do it at the Grand Slam. So the draw played out for him. I think he's played to each match to the level. Now can he bring an eight-time Grand Slam champ, Australian Open champ, 17-time major winner, Novak Djokovic, can he meet that level? Uh in a final, that's really tough. It is. <laughs> what I love most is after Medvedev beat Tsitsipas in that semi-final, is that he said straight away, all the pressure is on Novak. You know, here yeah. you go, just <laughs> load him up, you know, because he's played eight finals here before and never lost, and it's so true. But I love how he just playfully just put that out there. And look, I think he'll come out, he'll, sure you'll be a little bit nervous, but I think he's just going to swing freely. And that backhand, I mean, Oof. oh gosh, they yeah. both have terrific backhands, but it's going to be like Djokovic playing a 25-year-old version of himself. It, yeah. It's going to be such an interesting match. I really can't wait for it. They are similar, Nick, and, and not just in court craft necessarily, but as personalities, both very eloquent and sort of personable, somewhat charming in front of the camera. But they do have this 
white line fever, as we yeah. say when they go on. No, 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 totally. I love those points that you've made. And I think Medvedev has become more and more comfortable with that. We saw at the U.S. Open a couple years ago when the crowd really got against him. And he used that as fuel, which I think Djokovic has had yeah, that in the past. Yeah, I love that. In the past, for, for sure, for Djokovic yeah. against Rafa or Roger, he's felt that too. I really think that it is an opportunity for Medvedev, like Nat is saying, to swing for the fences. And the scary thing is, is when he swings for the fences, oftentimes the ball goes in. And I really think he's going to use that experience of beating Novak in London last year at the ATP Finals. He'll really be, be geared up by that. Yeah, I think so too. And I'm really looking forward to it. I think the one area that Novak can probably try to exploit, Daniel, is, is that net play. He is not very good let's no. let's be honest <laughs> when it comes to net play so if he can draw him in mm. a little bit and maybe mm. draw that out i think that puts pressure on daniel but you know if medvedev gets off to a flying start oh he's going to be hard to stop we've been flawless so far in your prediction to get to this point oh, Nick, oh, the oh. Is on. i can't let you go without, <laughs> without a name and an amount of sets from each of you well I, I always i always stick with my pick to start a tournament so i picked medvedev to start this tournament and i'm going to stay with him but let's play a classic on Sunday night, the final night of what's been an incredible tournament, Medvedev in five. That makes sense. Look, <laughs> I'll change it up just slightly. I'm going to say the Russian in four. Oh, okay. wow. Okay, come on, John. Um, you can't get off the hook either. <laughs> Djokovic in five for uh, me. Oh, there we go. And it's it's, it's going to go the distance. <laughs> All right, so we've each got it covered except for a straight sets victory yeah. then. <laughs> I, I really don't think this match will be straight no. sets. That would shock me yeah. more than anything else. Time will be the final judge on this one. Thank you for your insights tonight. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks, Nick and Nat. And it's been a fantastic night 13. More in store tomorrow. Join us for the review of that again here on the Oz Open YouTube channel where you can get great daily curated content every day of Australian Open 2021.